everybody this video is sponsored by myself my own service one-on-one -on -one call it's one hour you can record it um, basically I share screen I go through charts I show my exact process and insights into how I trade of my long strategy that's made over three hundred and seventy thousand dollars at this point something you're interested in you can go ahead check out the link below look at the schedule look at the details and I appreciate it thanks let's get on to the video Everybody, monthly recap for October, $41,200. Solid month for me, I'm very happy with it. Uh, could have pushed myself a bit more, but that's all right. I want to talk about a pattern that I've been seeing working lately. I kind of feel like I realized this pattern was working, but a little bit too late perhaps. Uh, by the time I realized it, a lot of the plays have, had already occurred. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a look and basically the pattern, pattern I'm referring to is get a large surge and then it'll have its pullback and then uh, on the clean break of that downtrend you're getting a secondary kind of just a bounce but it's working very well and it's happening pretty consistently uh, so definitely something to look out for now if you look on the multi-day this was just a very explosive move on day one then just a big washout and you can see that this was the bounce day now I was aware of it and I was watching it and unfortunately I made a pretty crucial error well, I missed the morning entries because I wasn't really watching it in the morning, but I noticed it had perked and held those gains in the afternoon. So I was watching it to see if I could get a breakout over two for bounce to maybe 250, you know, I was thinking something like that. Okay, so I saw this setup right here and I decided I was going to try to take the breakout of it, and I did. I get, got in at 197 and got the push to 2, but it was weak, got rejected by 2. I sold it on the way down for break even, and it washed all the way back down to 189. So kind of what I've been seeing lately is a lot of, uh, a lot of chop and a lot of, you know, kind of patterns that look really good that just aren't working how you would maybe expect them to it's been kind of tricky and it tests again now, I don't take an entry here because I mean it just faked out and I'm very cautious I'm kind of thinking eh, I'm not really sure about this and it slams back down again to 190 and once again it kind of recovers that range starts to test again now in this case, I suppose third time was the charm because on the third time it did break out and had a really nice run to 225. But the two the two shakeouts before the one that actually worked, uh, they got to my head and I just was not comfortable with even attempting uh, an entry here. And it, you know it's kind of tough. It's like. Should I have went for it again? Probably. Probably. So it kind of hurt, you know, seeing it push like this when I just, I felt like I was on the right track and then I just kind of lost my confidence somewhere along the way. And I didn't execute on, on that third spot. And then I saw this development, you know, nice structure here, very nice structure. and. I could have most certainly taken this entry here, um, you know, just hovering for a solid five minutes and then taking this three minute flag setup within kind of the bigger picture play. I could have definitely taken it for the continuation trend, but again, just dealing with some confidence issues in October. Um, not sure why, but definitely something's going on with me where I'm just not quite executing as sharply as I would uh, as I would like to be you know so just something to think about you know I got to be aware of, of when 
I'm kind of losing my touch, so I can kind of recalibrate. And you know, if this becomes a trend where you get a couple of fake outs uh, before the one that works, you know, if that becomes something I see more often, well, obviously I'm going to have to adjust and just trade accordingly, you know. Trade accordingly, definitely. And it doesn't help that I, I saw it late to the point where I might. You know, my first starter was 197. Um, I should have been more prepared for this. Uh, should have been able to scoop it in the 170s or one, uh, 180s. But I just wasn't watching it because of lack of preparation on my part. Uh, so, that, you know, very nice balance play. ASTC, kind of the same story. You know, I get a big pump, washes out. And then kind of as it's washing and, and, and kind of you can picture it, how it could curl and kind of bounce, you know, and that's what I'm watching for. And ASTC happened somewhat recently. Uh, so I was a bit more prepared for this because I had noticed this trend kind of working. Um, so I was on top of it kind of right out the gate. I mean, it helped. It had a pre-market gap up which is always kind of a hint as to what could come so as it washes in the morning um, I mean it's good for me right it's like yeah cheaper price thanks you know good good stuff uh, if I can get in at a cheaper price I'm always happy with that so I just took this break out of the wedge uh, for the trend reversal I was in 4,000 shares at 214 now, my plan was actually to have a lot of patience on this and try to hold it to the 270s. I really felt strongly ASTC, kind of based on that multi-day scale, could reach the 270s. But as it's coming up here, it's just something about the momentum. I think the overall market was red this day. Um, I just wasn't sure. I wasn't feeling it. Um, and I, I ended up selling it at 238. Because I just felt like that explosive momentum just wasn't quite there. So I did make, how much did I make on that? Um, 4215 to 230 I made around $800 on this. I'll tell you what my error was. Okay, I made a huge error. And that would be... You know, not understanding that lately things have been very, very choppy, very tricky, okay? When this comes down and washes to those morning levels, okay, and all of a sudden, it's like it makes a double bottom. And before you know it, it has, like, really good structure, and I was watching it. I saw it. I was watching this happen in real time, thinking, I think it's pretty good. I should probably get in. Uh, hesitation kills though and I didn't take immediate action I hesitated and then once it started to rip I was like I froze up okay so I missed the entry uh, the re-entry um, for the continuation which I could have had a lot more patience on I also see another entry you know, right here holds VWAP and starts to curl I mean there's nothing wrong with taking that entry and again, I'm having issues with execution, which is weird. It's like I've been trading for a long time. I have a lot of experience. Why am I hesitating on some of these you know, pretty clean? I mean, overall, it's a little choppy, but it's pretty clean. And I should definitely be taking entries on this stuff, especially because the current trend is a little bit more chopped than usual. So I do need to adjust and, and definitely take more action on some of these plays. I like how I played the morning though. Really good trade in the morning on that. Just kind of unfortunate. Uh, I didn't act quicker on some of those re-entry opportunities. MRIN was a big, big mover. Now, something I've been seeing lately is kind of this third day or kind of like a first day pop and then it'll come down a bit, hold some gains and then have secondary pops that are, you know, been very good to play. 
Alright, so kind of on the day I was looking at can can definitely see the structure. So the thing is, again, you're seeing a lot of chop up and down, and it's just forming in this kind of range. Um, it becomes a range bound and during choppy conditions, you kind of want to just wait for kind of a dip to hold and then try to take an entry kind of off that dip. Wait for a dip to hold, take an entry off the dip. So whatever you're trying to do, you know, you want the dip to confirm and then you kind of buy as it's coming off that dip. It just makes it a little easier to manage risk on some of these choppy, choppy plays. It was difficult, you know, very difficult. In fact, kind of... I mean, it's making a pretty obvious trend here, pretty obvious trend, but the thing is, it's like, it makes this false breakdown. And I've been seeing this a lot too, kind of a false breakdown. It'll pop back up, reclaim the range, and then start breaking out. So, again, very tricky stuff. And, I mean, it's just really tricky right now, kind of with all this chop and... I, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's just got to be a little more open-minded to what's possible and how it could be potentially forming and kind of definitely have to adjust. Um, definitely a lot more trying, too. I'm taking a lot more stabs on stuff that I might, I might not be over, overly confident on, but I am taking uh, a try at it. I'm trying to get better at playing this chop. Because ideally, I mean, I'm just not, uh, I don't play kind of chop on long-term time frames like this, like a long-term time scale. I'm not used to having to hold my plays for like multiple hours. I'm used to more explosive halt plays, like momentum stuff. And I've just not been seeing a whole lot of it lately. I mean, there obviously there has been very explosive moves. But I can't explain it. It's just not as many explosions in the afternoon. I'm just seeing a lot of pre-market, uh, explosive stuff pre-market. Kind of out the gate, um, or I mean, uh, MRIN on day on day one did have an explosive move. It's just on this day it was kind of weird. E Trade was making me call in. If I wanted to t take a position, I would have had to call in to make somebody else have you know take the position for me. I wasn't cool with that, so I just didn't trade it. Um, okay, next next play. Again, with the perk, kind of holds those gains, and then on day three, it just has a, just an absurd move, and it's one of those things I knew it could happen. I was like, I gotta watch it. Got distracted for just a little bit, and once you get distracted and it starts to run, you missed it. You know, you missed any safe entry, and it just kept going. So, uh, you know, kind of just from reviewing in this video, I'm kind of getting uh, the feel that, you know, I'm really, I'm not preparing enough for some of these plays that have massive potential. Um, and I may actually be watching a little bit too much. I might have to actually zone in and focus on these perker type plays that could have massive upside. I, I think I need to kind of readjust my focus um, on some of these plays. It does have a, a washout and it makes kind of this weird afternoon recovery and, and once it breaks out of that downtrend it just rips for the bounce. That was pretty cool. Holds up on day two and then finds a morning rip as well to kind of continue that bounce. So. A lot of these scales are happening uh, on multi-day time frames now, and so so it's really just about adjusting your view, adjusting your mindset, getting used to some longer time frames. I'm gonna have to start holding my plays for longer, start looking at uh, preparing on multi-day scales a bit more, and I've been doing that for a while, but even more so now. So just gotta get used to kind of the new the new trends. So for MDRR, I mean, after hours mover, kind of had a slight pullback in the morning, but then once the market opened, I mean, it just shot up and 
I always have a hard time playing these when they just kind of explode right out the gate and right into a halt, it dips a bit out of the halt and then just surges again. It's like I just have a hard time playing stuff that that just goes straight up like this. So I miss the entire day one. Um, and it's kind of the same thing where it has a, a big pump day one, pulls back. And then back to the $2 range, it's like, yeah, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. Why you could have a bounce. It's a former support zone. Okay. From day one and from day two, nice support area. And pretty much touched that spot a few days in a row. So it's strong support, and after it holds up for multiple days, it's just a nice uh, nice thesis for a bounce. And it, even though it's low volume, you know my take on volume doesn't matter to me. As long as your play has a good thesis and some good structure, and you're using level two to help you time the entry and to know what is safe, what's a safe size to take, those sorts of things. I mean, it bounces from 220 to 290. I mean, there is a solid play there, and there is a pretty clear indication um, that you could definitely get involved. Okay, so pretty interesting stuff. And, of course, LYL. Again, first perk on day one, kind of holds the gains on day two, and then just an explosive move on day three to new highs. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, let's see. This ticker has been good to me as far as I've nailed it a few times, made some good money. Uh, so, missed this day, which I shouldn't have missed it. Again, it just comes down to lack of preparation, lack of having an open mind. I've been missing the day three surges. And uh, yeah. Going into November, I'm going to be looking out for them a bit more, although with trading, if you don't really pick up on the trend fast enough, that trend can just move on pretty fast, and all of a sudden, if it's not working anymore, then it's like, oh, you just didn't adjust to the trend fast enough, and that's how it can be sometimes, but we'll see if they continue or not. Um, you know, I think I, I played this, just the fact that it had a nice green day and it kind of pulled back and held gains horizontally all day from the day before support. I liked kind of how it was reacting to that support level. So I, I took an entry in here um, in the 220s. I sold it around 260. It was a solid win. Um, I just didn't realize that it was, you know, could hold up and then just explode to new highs I, I really did not see how that could be possible um, but it happened which you know I missed it but it kind of helped me prepare for day two um, just because you know it's kind of like this it has a nice upside move and then it's like okay it's in a channel uh, if it breaks out of the channel or holds gains and then curls again well you know what it might see some new highs over this high when a ticker is hot, keep your mindset playing it as if it's a hot stock. Um, keep playing it like it's hot till it's not. You know, it's really that simple. Um, it's showing you can make explosive moves, so you might as well try it out. I played it in the morning, $200 win or so, kind of sold it on the weakness to reevaluate, got back involved in the afternoon once it held gains. And, you know, because it's a hot stock and because it just seems to keep exploding to new highs, that was my mindset. And that's what I was going for again. I actually wanted the $5 breakout. Um, couldn't quite get there. But this was probably the best patience I've had on a play in months. Probably months, yes, I would say. So definitely one of my favorite plays... I would say one of my favorite plays of the year, actually, um, just because of kind of the mindset, the entry, pinpointing it, using level two to help me, um, holding through all of this and, and selling it. You know, once that trend broke, I just accepted the fact, you know, that, hey, it couldn't do the $5 breakout. It's breaking down. I have to get out. You know, it's telling me I have to get out and I got out. Uh, so definitely my favorite trade. 
uh, in a long time. And, and that was over a $2,000 win. Just very nice, very nice. I think $2,500. Um, really, really liked that trade. And the trade recently, you know, it's just downtrending for multiple days, but overall, it's held the 240s. Okay, 240 was the breakout zone, it's held it. Again, if it's a hot stock and it holds an important range, there's nothing wrong, wrong with trying it again. It's still a hot stock. It can pull off a crazy move. You never know. Okay, and I did get a pretty nice bounce. Played it a couple times. Honestly, not as much uh, momentum as I thought. You know, I thought once it started bouncing that more volume would come in and it would possibly have an explosive move to four. But once it became obvious that that, that momentum was just not coming in, um, I played it accordingly. So always adjust to kind of the price action in real time. Feel it out. Um, so yeah, that's basically the type of plays that I've been looking at and playing in October. They've been fun. They've been they've been fun, um, but I do need to do a better job of playing them and adjusting to them. So going forward, we'll see. Exciting news! I am getting a new PC. I already ordered it. It'll arrive around November 17th, and the reason why it's exciting is because I feel like trading off of a laptop that is unstable, laggy, and crashes on me for such a long time. I don't know why I have not invested sooner into a setup. I really don't have a, I don't have an answer for that, but uh, from a psychological perspective, I, I feel like I haven't been sizing up because I'm too fearful that I'm going to take large size and my laptop will crash. And I think that when I get my new setup, you know, should run flawlessly and no more crashes, which means I'll be a lot more comfortable to size up and step my game up with this new setup. So I think it's a good investment um, and that'll be pretty cool. So looking forward to that. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of the monthly recap. I just went over the plays I could kind of remember off the top of my head and Again, like $41,000 in a month. That is amazing. And uh, shout out to some people too on Twitter. Alex, you know, he's been killing it lately. I'm sure a lot of you know who Alex is. Um, he's just, I've been following him for a long time. It's just, I, I liked kind of his, his work ethic and I knew that somebody with that level um, of work ethic could definitely make it in this game so i wanted to follow his journey you know he, he's very transparent shows everything you know and um yeah it's really cool to see him scale up the way he has and he's pushed the limit um very impressive in a matter of like a few months he's he's just exploded um, far better trader than me now you know he, he's up more money overall than me now and it's just pretty crazy. So I'll link his Twitter in the description. You can check him out if you don't know him. But, you know, he's inspired me to try to scale up and push myself a bit more. Because the truth is, I've gotten comfortable with where I'm at. And it's just one of those things. I could make this amount of money and have just, I, I could be fine. I have a simple lifestyle. I, I don't need to be making more money, but at the same time, I want to be the best trader I can be, and I want to push myself to get to new new heights, new levels. That's why trading is fun and, I, and, and why it's so great. And I feel like I've kind of lost touch with that. I've kind of forgotten about the art of trading, kind of, the game behind it and, and how we all want to be better traders we all want to push ourselves to new limits and I don't want to forget about that you know I don't I don't want to I don't want to stop pushing I guess is what I'm saying I've, I've just I've been in cruise control for a little bit too long you know a few months now I've been in cruise control so 
hopefully in November and December, I can start stepping my game up a bit, scaling up, taking some bigger shots. Um, but yeah, this review has been helpful for me. Just look over the plays, look over the charts, realize that maybe I haven't, you know, I really haven't been planning as much as I should. I haven't been focusing as much as I should on some of these setups. And it's shown because I really haven't had, you know, uh, as far as big wins go, I haven't had any single big winners in October. And that's kind of due to lack of preparation. So nice to kind of realize that. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.